Hi folks, this is Soda Fruit. Today is my last day in Asia, which I want to spend exploring the highland agriculture over at 1000 meters above sea level in Java, in the surroundings of Chiboda's Botanic Garden. <coughs> I'm here in an area, uh, yeah, very, uh, very properly located for this because the whole surroundings are highland veggie and uh, sometimes also fruit agriculture but first of course i have to get out of my gated community which has a couple fields here beans beans onions chilies and a couple other things intermixed but yeah let's get to the areas where some more serious agriculture is practiced by the way the orchid tree here has edible young leaves, flowers, and fruits, but it's not necessarily a major fruits uh, food source. Uh, just like the little date palms in the background, probably Phoenix Robellini. Oh, this one almost tricked me. I almost thought I had another Phoenix Robellini there. But this is just a beautiful giant epiphytic fern growing on this little palm tree, making a much bigger crown than the palm tree itself. For this, unfortunately, I don't know if this specific fern is edible. Wait, there is solandra growing here, but also fruits, which look almost like passion fruit. Uh, is there a passion fruit vine hidden somewhere among the solandra vine? Must be, because they're also passion, passion, well, what would you call them? Passion leaves, passion fruit leaves, passion flower leaves. Yeah, here it is, see? A maracuya, right next to the solandra. Young mango trees. I guess here at, right now we should be at, at around 1100 meters, I guess mango cultivation, uh, Probably they don't do commercial mango cultivation here, but a couple trees in the garden still totally work. This looks like some Garcinia, probably a mangosteen. Mangosteens are ultra tropicals, so I'm not sure they grow in fruit properly up here. I think it's too cold for mangosteens and durians up here. Mangos, yeah, okay. But mangosteens and durians, I saw a durian tree at over 1300 meters. So many hotels and all called Villa Lotus, interesting. Well, I saw a durian tree at over 1300 meters, but I don't think it produces fruits, however, uh, we'll see. The pitanga, and there is even a half ripe fruit hanging here. Also some Peruvian apple cacti down in Bogor at around 300 meters above sea level. They are producing fruit. Not sure about here. Also not even sure if those houses are inhabited or are actual villas like weekend and holiday houses of the rich. I mean, compared to the surrounding villages, my gated community is very empty. Here a particularly beautiful hibiscus. The inner side of the petals is red, the outer side is creamish yellow. Hibiscus flowers are edible, and actually they are really tasty flowers. Well, unlike for example the bougainvillea flowers, bougainvillea flowers are also considered edible, but they are hard like crepe like non-melting crepe paper, tasteless, and they're edible in a way you can put them on your food and they will add some color and they will not poison you. Hibiscus flowers on the other hand are, yeah, are a full-fledged edible food source. Now we have the little problem that our community, our street here Villa Lotus Street, which has three 
barriers at the lower end seems to be at that end it's a whole network of little roads but they are all dead ends not connected to the road network of the surrounding villages guess the posh people here don't want local villagers in their area I'm walking up here right now because I want to explore a small possibly jungle-like area with the waterfall but from there I'll try to get to the agricultural area what is this oh oh yeah this is not a mango but what it's called a sea mango or a suicide apple see the fiber structure of the fruit inside if you confuse this with the mango and eat it you are in trouble or shall I rather say you are out of trouble forever so don't confuse your fruits folks so let's see what agriculture we'll have here at the last plots which haven't been sold for mentions yet we have onions a couple chilies in between I don't know if the chilies are only supposed to give an additional income or if onions and chilies are actually some beneficial combination and if you look at the weeds in between we have sage and wood sorrel both edible well sage is quite bitter but in moderation a useful herb and wood sorrel is sour and will make you and will make you forget that you are thirsty but it removes only like all other sorrels only your symptoms you don't feel thirsty anymore but actually you, you need more water to compensate for all the oxalate in the sorrel and if you don't drink too much water with, uh, if you don't drink a lot of water without feeling thirsty uh, yeah this oxalate will condensate in the form of kidney stones in your well kidneys was this tagetes daylily well the flowers are edible and tasty and really spicy also notice all the pines around here and cypresses and also a lot of monkey puzzle trees but right now i don't see a single one different araucaria species just like the agaves and cacti they are planted here to provide a high mountain feeling like this seems to be a yeah a high mountain retreat for rich people so of course it needs to look like the alps and the rocky mountains with all their conifers and stuff here we have a sugar palm one of the most important survival plants in the jungle it will give you sugar if you know how to tap the young inflorescences i don't know how it will give you edible fruits if you know how to process them and if you find somebody to process them for you because the processing is incredibly itchy it will give you a lot of sago and palm cabbage the palm cabbage is the easiest to retrieve and actually outside of the fruit season when i'm hungry in the jungle sometimes i cut down such a tree not such a big one it's probably too tough already but the young one this is also the staple food of the penan people very very important survival food outside of the fruit season and next to it the money tree also called the brazilian peanut here you can see the big fruits inside those big fruits they are nice tasty seeds here we have a little lockwood lying on the ground here are two lockwood trees this subtropical fruit grows much better here in the highlands than in the hot equatorial lowlands i still don't know the name of this brassicaceae vegetable here there are a couple fields i think those are the last plots which haven't been sold for villas like this brassicaceae is quite popular around here and i'm not sure if the onions are planted here on purpose again either for an additional income or because it's beneficial uh, 
a lot of pests don't like onions or if those onions are left from a previous harvest but nice to see a couple fields but I won't see a lot more some of the villas here are really fairy tale like but right now I'm more interested in this little field here in front onions again and chilies do we really need such tall supports for chilies made of bamboo well the bamboo is growing in the background very convenient but do we need such tall supports for chilies i mean they're over two meters tall and the chilies usually don't get over a meter or are they a remnant for from some other oh yeah look at that you can actually see some vines along those support some remnants of dead vines they look like cucumber vines or maybe some other cucurbitaceae so these tall supports were put here ah, here is even a lone survivor cucumber those supports were put here for a cucumber patch and then when the cucumbers were harvested chilies were planted which do not need such high supports but since the supports were still here they used them clever Quite good size fix. Always check out all the fix you find. I am not aware of really toxic fix. 20% will taste disgusting. 70% will taste boring and 10% will taste delicious. However, those are still hard and unripe. So they will taste boring to disgusting. Belum Bayar. Somebody hasn't paid yet. I wonder if that means that you can still buy this thing if you want to retire in the highlands of Java in the highlands of the islands of Java yeah that's your chance now we had the big storm a couple days by the way I was in Bogor at that time in Bogor it was a very strong rainstorm but here it seems that it was more than rain because the ground is covered with cones and twigs here in Araucaria cone I I even forgot to identify the species, but I think last time somebody wrote a species name. Uh, write down the name of the Araucaria if you know which one this is. It's not so interesting for me because it has no edible seeds, unlike the bunya pine, which is also grown around here. Behind this wall is that jungle or probably bamboo thicket area, which I can see on the satellite, but I guess nothing gets over this wall and the numerous barbed wire lines here here a particularly beautiful water apple or sisygium species is in flower you cannot see it so well because the flowers are hidden inside the tree in interesting usually flowers are exposed at the outside later it will have a lot of big tasty fruits here we have the big bull's horn banana or buffalo horn or cow horn uh, those are a little bit puny, but maybe that's because of the high elevation. And you can see they grow on a pseudo stem, which is not particularly tall. The giant bananas grow on quite small plants. Behind them, a papaya plant. Behind them, again, the walls of the gated community with the barbed wire. A torch ginger, a very beautiful, with very beautiful purplish, purplish leaves. Here, manioc, very important vegetable although here they mostly eat the leaves and only sometimes the uh, uh, the roots here we have some manioc relative i think which is also a popular vegetable and down here sweet potatoes you can also eat the vine as well as the well potato like structure underground a guava tree covered with unripe fruits but that's not actually what I'm after. This is a very beautiful area for walking around, checking out fruit trees and ornamentals, which can be used as fruit trees. But today I really wanted to see the actual agriculture of the villagers around here. Uh, I guess I have to walk all the way down to the gate and then up again through one of the village streets here again phoenix robellini here a couple bananas which have been severely damaged 
by the storm, but they're gonna survive. A bean field, I cannot even say what type of beans because the plants are young. Here a couple eggplants which don't look so good. Oh, a papaya which hasn't survived the recent storm. Another one. Now this probably fell even in an earlier storm a couple weeks ago. Still a couple papaya fruits on the ground, but I think this is this is older than just a couple days. Also nobody is harvesting the eggplants for some reason. More beans here, more unharvested eggplants. Eggplants are tasty veggies folks, harvest them. Also of course observe the same type of bamboo supports for uh, for the beans. Of course those bamboos are nice, a nice natural grown. Hi folks, the gardeners of my expensive community. Of course those bamboos are nice, natural, locally grown supports, much better than plastic or metal. But also consider how much space you need to grow them all. I think this is a dwarf Cavendish banana. Looks a lot like the stuff grown in the Canary Islands. Really short. And the bananas are probably Cavendish. Well, this big thing here is probably a Pisan Kapok banana. Yes, I can see the big, ang uh, well, the smallish angular fruits on quite big pseudo stems and often Often the foliage is also more dark than with other banana varieties. Some random... What? Oh, mushrooms. Boletus mushrooms. I think this is an edible species which lives in association with pines. And either this species or close relatives can also be found in temperate and even quite cold mountain areas. But I'm not going to risk anything by eating unknown mushrooms here. Here we have a nettle tree. I think this is the genus Debregeasia. The fruits are usually quite tasty. Those are really small, but they seem to be ripe. Okay, those were not too tasty. Sour. And I think they're a bit on the small side, so the plant probably couldn't nourish them properly. Here you see that they don't just do weeding by hand, they also use pesticides on those small fields. Everything has been killed by pesticides even without harvesting the eggplants first. What do you have against eggplants folks? If you don't want them, I do. Thick berries covered with thousands of fruits. Westerners consider them inedible, but Indonesians eat them. However, there are very few which are starting to ripen. Almost all are still green. They are not my favorite, probably because of the seed and the tough skin. But it's a fruit a lot of people consider edible and worth foraging. Also, even inside the community, there are a lot of security posts, but I guess most of them are not even manned right now because they have all the security at the entrance, at the main entrance, and it seems the main entrance is the only entrance. Let's try the pitangas. I don't think anybody else is going to pick them if I don't. <clears throat> well, I guess... It's a red variety because those didn't come off voluntarily. They don't want to eat them underripe. Well, this is still underripe, but okay. Mm -hmm. Because they are quite sour underripe. This wasn't actually incredibly sour. I think it's an improved variety. But still, I prefer them nice and ripe and red and sweet and juicy. Mulberries have become a very popular fruit here recently. I say recently because it's a temperate fruit and it's the white mulberry despite being black. There are no old mulberry trees in Southeast Asia I'm aware of. Uh, but 
as I said recently, they've become popular. So a lot of young fruits, uh, a lot of young trees, and they provide you with a lot of tasty little berries. Very nice addition to the local fruit uh, fruit buffet. And I think they're either not seasonal or have a different season from all the tropical fruits. That makes them a lot more valuable because here most of the fruits stay fruit within two months and then you have ten months without a lot of fruits. This hill here is a promontory of the Pandrango volcano and yeah those volcanoes of course from time to time they erupt and kill a lot of people but they are also the reason Java has such a fertile soil and if you look at the population distribution in Indonesia Java is only the fifth biggest island but half of the countries oh this is those are some Judas here slash witches butter mushrooms I think they're edible Java is only the fifth biggest island but half of the population of the country lives in Java around 140 150 million people and this is only possible due to the volcanic soil around here and that's also another reason every square meter around here is usually being used because you have to feed all those people here by the way other checkpoints and another checkpoint up there you have to feed all those people so um, if you have to reserve a lot of land to grow bamboo for supports that makes quite a dent into the available land for fruit and veg cultivation on the way up here i missed the velvet apple tree this is quite a popular fruit tree around here it's not one of the major fruit trees but you can find the fruits right now on most markets quite a nice khaki relative with a velvety with a velvety skin you can kind of compare them to a plum and the peach the plum is naked the peach is fuzzy and also the taste of uh, the taste of velvet apple is quite different from khaki here of course the oil palm I doubt or I'm pretty sure that up here they don't have commercial oil palm plantations but from time to time they have those things as ornamentals apart from lots of gardeners lots of security lots of delivery guys and this farmer and his in his little field over there I hardly see people yes I think those are those are weekend slash holiday mansions and even on the weekend there were not too many people around here this by the way is my mansion quite beautiful and nice inside and outside and actually i didn't expect to be in such a nice community but on the other hand you're isolated from the vibrant village life around you if you look at this little plant with the pink flowers the Iban in Borneo put this on my wounds when I asked them about some herbs to help me. And here I think is a jackfruit tree. Jackfruit should still easily grow around here. I mean it grows all the way to southern Europe so it should grow in the mountain climate here. This is one of the checkpoints it's being manned. I'm really not used to living in a gated community. In Germany they are not really a thing. Even rich people live in normal open areas. And what's this? Is this a fig? A lot of fruits on the ground. What are those fruits? Oh, uh, even kind of soft. Yeah, it is a fig. It is a fig with smooth, shiny leaves. Quite good sized fruits, however those seem to be not completely ripe. <laughs> if I start eating fruits from the ground in front of all the guards, oh, they will completely lose their fate in white people. Ah oh, well, I mean, it feels unripe. So, if you can tell me the name of this fig, I would be happy and I'll try it somewhere else where not gonna shock the security too much always keep the bandits close and the security closer I always give them some fruits when I pass hi 
so that the crazy white man is not being bothered too much. Google sends me this way, and of course we do not trust Google, but the security confirmed that this is the exit through the mosque. Ah oh well, if they say the exit goes through the mosque, we exit through the yes, it seems it's not, and it seems it's not only a pedestrian exit here. Yeah. That's a thing about Indonesia. However, I've seen the same thing in in Thailand and Cambodia also. Wherever a motorbike can go, a motorbike goes. Even if it's through the buildings, through the markets where. Well. Ah, here is the motorbike trace. He squeezed here through the mosque. Amazing. So now I'm out of the gated community and in the village. And I think are those Lima beans or Luna beans? Or what's the name of those specific beans here? Please enlighten me. Wait, let me show you. Here are the flowers, whitish flowers, and the vines, and by the way, avocado above them, with a lot of bananas over there. See the big carrot plants in the background? They have been left for seeds. Can you see them? A whole row of big carrot plants on this rubble wall. Also the biodiversity on such a rubble wall is incredible. All the plants and of course all the animals hi uh, hiding in the cracks. Not all are hiding in the cracks here. Hello mister! Hello lady! Uh, the little kids here are really excited to see white people. This is not an area that sees a lot of western tourism. Just local tourism from the Jakarta area. Here again Hello lady, how are you? Well, here we have uh, carrots left for seed. Here we have carrots sown for uh, for uh, roots. And I think this is some sort of broccoli. And here between the onions, a lot of cilantro. Yes, I think it's cilantro. Yeah, pretty sure it's cilantro. Uh, well, uh, no, is it cilantro? Is it? No, 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 this is this other thing. And, and, uh, another apiaci, another apiaci herb. Uh, tell me what it is. I'm, I'm not sure if it's cilantro anymore. Okay, and sorry little girl, but I'm going away from you because I also need to do a bit of filming here. Oh, those bridges around here. Ah. Here you can see the fence of the gated, com the wall of the gated community from the outside. Also, look how beautiful this little house has been repaired with bamboo. Originally, it was not built with bamboo. Even the roof is built of wood. Now it has been repaired with bamboo. Bamboo will not last forever, but still. And here, sweet potatoes, more sweet potatoes and taro. More sweet potatoes, pak choy, lettuce, tiny chili plants, basil, eggplants. You might notice or you might not notice rice fields around here. I don't think that growing rice is a thing up here. It could totally grow here. A sink without a tail. Tomatoes. Rice could totally grow up here, but those mountain areas are needed for all those vegetables, for all those temperate vegetables which don't grow well in the hot lowlands. Here, again, carrots, cilantro, onions, and this, uh, and this brassicaceae. Yeah, Kitty, I'm not gonna eat you. Don't worry. Veggies, veggies, veggies. I think the fruits are mostly for, for their own consumption, although some might be sold when there is no fruit season in the lowlands. But the cash crops here are not rice, not fruits, not oil palm or caoutchouc. The cash crops above a thousand meters in Southeast Asia. The main cash crop is veggies. It always feels so intrusive walking buggy, buggy. walking those tiny lanes here, sometimes even walking through houses. 
But that's the way they built. Buggy! That's the way they built here. Every square meter or square foot, square inch, square whatever must be used either for housing or for food production. And so not much. Oh, those girls are so scared. And so not much is being left for the, not much is being left for big fancy roads. <laughs> A different water apple or Sisygium species. And here, I thought this is Malabar spinach, but it's not. Tell me the name of this little plant if you know it. Creeping thick. The Chinese have ways to make this edible, but I think here it's just an ornamental. Now the question is, which one of those things are public, which ones are private? Well, this one is a meter wide, even one and a half meters wide. Must be a public road. Here again, those beautiful red passion fruits. Well, in this case, they are even a bit more purple. Maybe the cucumber guy knows what hybrid this is. I guess it's a hybrid because I've never seen fruits on it. <laughs> and again, the little kids. At least I'm not being perceived as a threat around here. There are places like remote Dayak villages or Banjar villages, the Banjara very orthodox Muslims where you are basically being perceived as a threat and followed here they just look a ah, white man there's never been a white man here before but yeah he should be okay so here we are on a main village road which I'm intending to take a little bit uphill I think this this little flower here is the Brazilian version of the Szechuan pepper, a neurotoxin which is quite popular as a miracle spice. And here a chili patch with a couple onions in between. A cedar or jujube or Indian apple. And here a nursery, the road to the botanic garden of Chibodas here is lined with nurseries and little vending places for uh, for plants but I guess a lot also comes from the side roads if you are not lucky enough to have a plot on the road to the botanic garden you put your nursery here and try to sell your plants somewhere else those high mountain areas are also very popular for nurseries I wonder why do the young plants grow better here or more rain or what I mean a lot of those things are supposed to go into the lowlands later, but the nurseries are mostly here in the highlands. Maybe tell me your opinion on it. Oh, asparagus fern, which is not a fern. And the fruits are disgusting and full of oxalate, but you can eat the little tubers. What was the name of this beautiful flowering wine? I totally love it. Oh, more nurseries. I thought that this road to the botanic garden is something special, but nope the other roads wherever a truck can go <laughs> are fringed with nurseries I did a very long video about the nurseries and also showed them a little bit in other videos but I want to show the real food agriculture in today's video but I keep encountering nurseries yeah I guess the reason for those nurseries could be the constant rain in the lowlands there is a higher chance of dry seasons where you have to water. Up here I guess you can rely on the rain. Celery. A celery patch. The aunties are concerned about me. Ain't I not cold? I told them no, Indonesia is hot. A couple hundred meters further. Still nurseries and mansions. I guess... <coughs> Even outside the gated community, wherever the big trucks of the rich people can go, a lot of houses are being bought or built by them. A young pineapple and jaboticaba. Jaboticaba has become a very popular fruit shrub around here. Oh, just like the strawberry guavas up there. But both are not in season. 
Look at those hundreds of little Jaboticaba plants waiting to be sold, planted and harvested. Here the wild beetle pepper, the Bidayu in Borneo put this on my wounds. And here a flowering, probably strawberry guava. They have a couple lemon guava like things, but I think this is the strawberry. This guava will give a lot of fruits in a couple of weeks. Almost too many fruits. Oh, once they get big, once they get big, those branches are breaking. This is the normal guava. Oh, bule, now they found out the crazy half-naked guy in the rain. This is a stupid white man. Here the strawberry guava, and here a fig. Also a fruit tree which is becoming very popular around here, but unlike the mulberry, I think there are still issues with the cultivation because of the constant rain. Also another thing, I realized that most of their tools are with quite simple handles and quite simple and cheap handles, but the handles of their hose are real pieces of art and yeah, if I have time I might get myself an Indonesian hoe. No, I know what you think, I'm talking about the tool. I'm thinking about getting a parang or two, but if I have room, I might even, I might even buy a hoe. A stupid modern English language, whatever you say, you cannot say tick, you cannot say cock, you cannot say hoe. Those are very normal words, oh, very normal rain. But nowadays, they are considered offensive. I'm a farmer. I need a hoe. I use a hoe daily. Well, not really. But if I'm a vegetable farmer, I'll be hoeing every day. Yeah. Absolutely normal agricultural actions without which none of you would have food. But, yeah. It's considered offensive talking about them because somebody decided to use them to use those words also for a bit less savory things and then somebody decided that the word cannot even be used in the agricultural context anymore <laughs> and you might have noticed that all the successful youtubers they kind of avoid every word that can be offensive and guess what words can be offensive there is a dog instead of God, as not to offend the atheists. Uh, I would be offended if you call my God dog. There is a bulk instead of black. Like, this is a bulk nightshade. The night is bulk. Uh, sorry, there is a color black. And even if there are some people who were called black at some time, that doesn't mean that we have to abolish the word for this color. Well, anyway, enough ranting. A tomato plantation with lettuce and I think celery planted underneath. They like polyculture here. They like to, to basically get the most out of the land and they like to combine plants. I would really like to talk to some of those gardeners. Do they combine the plants to be beneficial to one another? Or do they just, have they just figured out what can grow together to increase the yield? And the funny thing is that tomatoes are not a, are not a major crop here. Yeah, this is the big difference between here and the Canary Islands. Everything here reminds me a thousand percent of the Canary Islands, except for the fact that there are not so many tomato plantations here. It's, everybody knows this vegetable, but it's not, a major crop around here. Maybe you can explain me to me why tomatoes are great. Why do those people use them so sparingly? Actually, every time I have some tomatoes in my food around here, I'm really happy. So should stay. A couple hundred more meters ahead. More nurseries. A lot of bonsais. Well, I mean, if that gets your more money, then veggies, yeah, all power to you. Just don't forget to grow enough veggies for everybody to fill their tummies. Because remember, the people in the lowlands, they not only rely on your beautiful bonsais, 
but also on your tasty veggies. There are a lot of things. They simply cannot grow at the same quality down there. Here the bonsais are being loaded and driven somewhere. Hello, mister. Kemana pohonini. Kemana. Pohon, pohon, kemana. Ah, kesana? Ah, okay. I guess they just gonna plant them somewhere around here for them to bulk up. Because, of course, big bonsais are the thing. Here they have made, here they have made mulberry bonsais out of some quite sizable mulberries for this area. Well, quite sizable, maybe they are like 10, 12 years old max. Okay, now they were, the trees were driven just 50 meters away from one plot to the next. Or are they, or are they collecting more stuff? Ah, no, I think they are. Oh no, I think. Hello, mister. Pohonini kesana? There is no kesini. There is no kesini. I thought you ke ke Jakarta. Bukan, kesini. So they are just being moved 50 meters from one plot to the other. Okay, folks, hati hati. Such friendly people. I would really like to sit down, have some coffee and some fried bananas with them, but it's Ramadan. They will all eat only after five o'clock and more nurseries. The purging nut. There are so many mild, mild uh, relaxants <laughs> which make you go to the toilet, but the purging nut, as the name suggests, supposedly makes you go to the toilet under there is nothing left to go. Very important medicine here. Must be used very sparingly, only by doctor's prescription, because it can be deadly. Just like the castor oil plant. Also an important medicine. Also if you do anything wrong, you die. Finally a bit more veggie agriculture, as you can see, if they work on the fields, they were completely covered. I mean, this is cool mountain climate. Not so much for me, but totally for them. Even though they are born here. And it's rainy, so... Yeah, cover up, folks. Don't watch the stupid white man walking around in a wife Peter. Guess you cannot even say wife Peter. It's just the name of a piece of clothing, but okay. Let's walk a little bit over there. Again, a nice polyculture. Celery, lettuce, and onions. Here a couple various citruses. The slope must be protected by a plant, by a sprawling plant with a lot of leaves. So the slope is planted with sweet potatoes. The good thing is, after it's finished protecting, it's it starts getting eaten. What? Uh, don't fall into the field. Construction site. A lot of bamboo, a lot of asbestos, and a lot of eggplants. But again, most of the eggplants are not even being harvested. Oh. I don't see them a lot on the markets nowadays so hmm. it's not that there is a giant oversupply of eggplants it's, uh, actually it was the same thing in Borneo a lot of tasty eggplants on the roadside never being harvested maybe there is uh, just a very small window for harvesting those Chinese slash Japanese eggplants they are much more tender than the western ones here by the way again chayote mm. Drumstick cabbages, very popular throughout the world, but around here you have to grow them in the highlands because the cabbage needs the cold nights to develop its sweetness. That's why even in Europe it's mostly a winter vegetable. It needs to get hit by the cold to develop its top taste, its top sweetness. Well, the bananas surely have been hit by the storm, <laughs> have been hit hard. This also reminds me so much of the Canary Islands, which are actually too cold and too windy for banana cultivation. 
let's see here, carrots, carrots, brassicaceae, and onions, again a polyculture, Oop, monoculture, only, only carrots here, and sweet potato at the edge to grow over the, to grow over the rubble wall, <coughs> again bamboo constructions, I bang, I'm, I guess I'm the only one still using the word bang, everybody else is using the word boss, look over there, there is a windmill, a tiny windmill just on one bamboo pole, what is it, is it ornamental, is it for electricity, is it to pump water, I remember in Malta in the late 20th century there were thousands of them pumping pumping water for those for the thousands of little veggie fields of Malta which looked a lot like those here by now yeah Malta is part of the EU people have gotten rich through gambling and all the other little tricks little countries around the EU can do to get filthy stinking rich the young people, they all study agriculture, but they don't work in agriculture, they work for the government. And all those thousands of young people who study agriculture in Malta, they just administer their grandparents who are the only ones still doing agriculture. But yeah, in the 20th century, there were everywhere those tiny veggie fields in Malta and also those windmills everywhere. Oh, here, mint among the onions. Limes. <laughs> In Borneo, this would be the Kasturi lime, but here it's a, another very tiny lime, but it's a totally different one. This is citrus, what was it? Uh, Ush, uh, I don't know, it's called L Jeruk Limau or just uh, li Limau, Limau Sambal around here. It's the default lime here on the island of Java. It's small and bumpy and it's a hybrid of limau purut and some obscure uh, citrus I've never heard about. But incredibly popular around here. But I guess in this area, yeah, like selling your veggie plots for mansions or putting a couple, a couple tourist rooms in the backyard is more profitable than agriculture. So I think it's gonna, it's gonna go back with time. Even here in Indonesia, the, this fruit agriculture will, huh, uh, this veg agriculture, the veggies will start coming from more and more remote areas, while more and more areas are being taken over by the, uh, by tourism. And if you say, well, yeah, but they, they cannot be so many tourists. Well, right now I'm going back down into the, <laughs> Hi boss, yeah, tourists, tourists, saya tourists, saya bulem. <laughs> Hi, apa kabar? Well, what I wanted to say, you might think, how can Indonesia have such a big supply of tourists? Well, this afternoon I'm going down into the metropolitan area of Jakarta, a tiny metropolitan area. The center, the really densely populated center of Jakarta is like what 10 15 kilometers across that's nothing that's the size of a small western city but it's in population it's the second largest metropolitan area in the world 30 million people a very fast growing economy and yeah a lot of those 30 million people want to spend a week or two a year in the cold highlands so I think right here we are seeing the transition from the traditional veggie agriculture we can see here to all those fancy wooden tourist homes, renting them out to tourists, selling one field or another for a new mansion to be built, um, creating thousands of tiny nurseries. It's, it's not that I don't want those people to have a to have an easy life and make good an easier life it's still hard work and make good money but it always makes me sad a little bit when a yeah when a food agriculture is being replaced by different types of basically tourism agricultures
Oh, is it filming? So, starting the long journey back downhill from the cold mountains to the most populous tropical metropolitan area in the whole white world. Ah, name ini sayur selada. Selada. Ini uh, dari air? Yeah. Ah, watercress. Here he has packed watercress for selling it on some of the markets. Terima kasih, boss. Watercress, well, used to be a very popular vegetable in temperate areas like Germany or Britain. There were even places famous for the cultivation of watercress. It was the main cash crop of some areas. Uh, it's still quite popular in like tropical and subtropical mountains. Very typical for uh, the mountains, for the rainy mountains of the Canary Islands, the north sides of the Canary Islands. Very typical also for high mountain areas in the Andes Mountains and also very typical it seems for high mountain areas here in Java. <laughs> Another thing that reminds me so much of the Canary Islands. And there are not even so many tomato plantations left on the Canary Islands nowadays, or at least they are under plastic. Oh yeah, there's another thing that's less typical here. The amount of plastic is less. They still use it a lot, but they don't cover huge fields with plastic. For example, in the area of Kundazang, in Sabah, in Borneo, where they have this highland veggie agriculture, they have a lot of areas covered with plastic. Probably they have more money and can invest proportionally more into plastic. Uh, here are the cabbages, carrots, and pak choy and onions and I think spaghetti beans are being prepared for shipping into the lowlands. And sorry I start talking about one thing and then see another thing uh, and uh, switch talking about the other thing. I have an attention span. No, I don't have an attention span of a four-year-old. Here, by the way, more watercress. And the guy wearing some uh, shoe shining equipment, the traditional way. Well, yeah, <laughs> what I wanted to say. When I have interacted with four-year-old, three-year-olds, two-year-olds, one-year-olds, I noticed that I do not have the attention of a four-year-old, the attention span of a four-year-old. I actually have a shorter attention span than all those toddlers. Could this be some walnut? I mean, Juglans? Juglans nigra or something else? I was told that Juglans nigra can grow even in the highlands of Colombia and Venezuela. If it can grow there, it can also probably grow here. Pity. I didn't reserve more time to spend around here. So many interesting tropical and subtropical treasures I could have found. I hope I don't get lost in all the tiny side lanes here. Whoa. Is this really a public street going through houses and stuff? Uh, well, as I said, Every square meter must be used for the vital veggie production. And also those people are smaller than me, so to them this probably doesn't look that narrow. I'm feeling very intrusive, but there are also some places in the Canary Islands which are similar. Yes, 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 I know. The last two, three days I probably said a thousand times that this area reminds me of the Canary Islands. Totally does. Uh, oh, here, a couple corn plants. Haven't seen any of those around, but corn is being sold on the markets right now. So I wonder where it comes from, if not from the mountains. The roads are getting more and more intimate. Since Google sent me uh, in Borneo <laughs> through a road with an estimated driving time of 17 minutes for 13 kilometers, and it was actually an overgrown, uh, an overgrown bulldozer 
bull, bulldozer strip where no car has gone for at least 10 years. Since then, I'm a little bit less trusting. Also, quite sad I didn't see how they grow the watercress. Does it just grow in the creeks and irrigation ditches? Do they have special pools for it? Do they flood some patches of land? I mean, yeah, harvesting a bit of watercress from creeks and ditches for your own consumption is okay, but if you have to supply the market, I think you start flooding some land. So I really would have liked to see this, but yep, I don't have much time. It's my last day. I have to get back to Jakarta. Back through the mosque. <laughs> through the motorbike lane of the mosque. And to my fancy gated and guarded community. Exiting through the main guarded gate of our gated community. Yeah, I think I already mentioned we have many layers of security here. A guy harvesting bamboo in a precarious situation above the road. Bamboo is a very valuable resource as we saw. For example, for all those veggie patches. By the way, in the very rainy areas, eroded slopes are often covered with this black plastic. Okay, I guess that's a good short-term solution, but eventually you have to develop new vegetation to stabilize the slope. Uh, and of course, with big area, big area soil disturbance, big area agriculture, uh, the danger for the for the soil and for the slopes increases. So please, carrot truck, don't run me over. This thing literally passed five. No, not even five centimeters away from me. Gonna steal your carrots if you are not nice. Here, by the way, a pomelo tree, as I said. Uh, the fruit production is more for local consumption. Although I'm sure that they can open quite lucrative markets and probably have done so already. For selling fruits for an expensive price out of season in Jakarta. Because I'm sure here at over a thousand meters above sea level. The fruit seasons are quite different. The next issue is to find food and coffee during the day, during Ramadan. 99% of people around here are Muslims. I guess at least 90% of them are fasting, maybe even more. The remaining sinners meet in little clandestine underground bars. You have to be in the know to enter. Buggy! And also always close the door because the, the fasting people are not supposed to see your eating because yeah if you are not eating and see somebody else eating or the same with drinking or with smoking it's not so pleasant here again observe the big solanum nigrum fruits and yes they are being eaten raw and unripe and here a guy in another bar is preparing banana leaves. I don't know for what exactly, they are too small to wrap whole portions of rice in them. Maybe for some small snacks. What are the, uh, what do they put in those leaves? Um, banana, banana leaves. Yeah, yeah, but what do they put inside? Maybe today. No, no, what food you put inside? No, I put that uh, in the uh, market. Bananas. Ah, you sell them in the market? Ah, and what for? What for?
That's a new use for but Ah, so the people put rice inside, like small portions. Back to the smell, good smell. Yes, good smell. Terima kasih. Well, I hope they could use the little anchors and advance a couple kilometers at a time and stop where I find interesting stuff, but I got the big bus. So, back to Chiao it is. Around the Punchak Pass at 1400 meters. The veggie gardens are replaced by tea plantations here in the background. Well, there is the tourist infrastructure in the foreground everywhere. I mean, remember, 30 million people in Jakarta suffering from heat and pollution who like to come here to the mountains. But behind all those little shacks, you can see the tea gardens. I don't know if a thousand meters where I stayed the last two days is too low for tea or 1500 meters is too high for most of the veggies or if it's a traditional thing that they grow tea in this village and veggies in the other villages or for what reason maybe some of you can enlighten me about that yeah, here pretty much all the all the crops seem to be tea well I didn't manage to spot a single tea plant around Chibodas